This conference will now be recorded. Is it visible? Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So today we are uh, to to in this course we are going to cover SAP ISU FICA uh, where we have to cover multiple things like uh, just to go through the contents which we are going to cover in these sessions. First is like uh, FICA basics. How what are the master data business master data we have in a FICA? What are the events like FQ events which is got triggered whenever a new function whenever a functionality is called called? So what are the FQ events which is called in background of that like uh, second we are going to see like how the documents has been posted what is the due date of those how to determine those due dates what is the life cycles of those documents and uh, uh, like we have account balance display so we will see like how the configurations of account account balance display seems like and uh, in the yeah in the third chapter we are going to see like uh, what are the transactions in we have in a isu like what are the main and sub how to configure those how the combination of these two determines the type of posting gl account determinations document types and uh, in module 4 that is incoming payment so in this we are going to uh see like how the payments has been posted what is the difference between payment lots and payment runs uh, how to post a refund on account what are posting logs clearing logs uh, outgoing logs how to add a bank account like uh once the payment has got failed it goes into a clarification portal and how to clarify those payments okay where we have those entries in the sap how to accept and how to release how to uh, cancel those okay and uh, yeah um, in module 5 we are going to see how the payment run works on the system how the auto pay runs in the system uh, how to make a payments through payment card in module 6 we are going to see like how the return is posted how to uh, how a return fees is getting calculated when return is got posted uh, like what is the common difference between refunds and returns what are the scenarios where refunds are getting posted and uh, how we got the how we got to know that these uh, entries are now being written on the system so this uh, this is all we are going to cover in module 6 in module 7 that is a clearing control like whenever a payment has been posted on an account uh, and we have a multiple due items like we have a invoice on an account we have a security deposit on an account so which uh, which document will get clear first if we post a payments on an account so this is all we learn under the clearing control uh, module in module 8 we have a dunning and collection so when a customer is not paying his invoices account is going into a dunning like uh, how to yeah i am mod i am audible right yeah we know you are yeah 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 thanks yeah so in module 8 we are going to cover like what is dunning and collections uh, dunning through collection strategies like what are the different uh, collection steps and collection strategies how we done those account what are the configurations like where it is configured and uh, as a part of dunning we are triggering some letters as well as a part of dunning we are going to disconnect some accounts if they are not paying their dues on time so once the disconnection has been happened and once the dunning has been happened on an account those accounts are submitted to collections we are going to know like uh, in a collection agency process how the items has been submitted to a collection agencies how those are submitted to those how in what scenarios we are going to recall those items how the file is getting created uh, for the unpaid receivables as a part of collection agencies in module 9 we have uh, interest calculations like uh, 
whenever a security deposit posted on an account like uh, and if we are returning those security deposits we give some interest to the customers how those interest has been uh, evaluated on the system whenever we have an invoice on an account as a credit sometimes we have an invoice on account as a credit how we are determining the interest on those line items so this is all we are going to cover in module 9 in module 10 we have an installment plan so how to create an installment plan so what are the background activities which is happening at our table level and what are the configurations for the installment plans so this is all we cover in module 10 in 11 module we have the <coughs> account maintenance so if we have uh, unpaid receivables and we have open payments on an account so how account maintenance happens on an account how to reverse our documents how to reset clear our documents document transfer from one account to another account we have a uh, mark as doubtful doubtful allowance and value adjustments as well we have a write-off in case of customer is not paying even after sending his invoice to a collection agencies our last step is to write off those documents on a customer account in module 12 we have a security deposits like how our cash and non-cash security deposit has been posted what is the life cycle of a cash security deposit uh, whenever it is posted and when it's got released and written back to the customer the proper life cycle of the security deposit we are going to discuss and in 13 module we have some correspondence so like whenever a uh, uh, account is eligible for any letter to be triggered uh, how the system creates a correspondence and uh, how it is getting printed uh, and it is sent to the customer so these are the modules which we are these are the uh, contents which we are going to cover inside this FICA sessions hmm, okay yeah so till here uh, does anyone have any doubts regarding the slavers so Vinod, uh, Shridhar here yeah. so yeah. Uh, when you say that when you're going to train you know, I'm trying to understand the methodology that typically uh, how do you train that's what I need to understand maybe you're going to cover later but uh, okay. when you uh, I mean definitely I'm, I'm thinking mm -hmm. you're going to uh, log into the mm -hmm. system and then you know show us the configuration part and then try to cover end to end right okay yeah so 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 the final one you mentioned there is an uh, FICA integration uh and then sap modules what what are the things uh what other modules in sap that you know the FICA integration that you're going to cover uh see it is uh this is a isu specific training so inside isu there is no such integrations with other, other modules so that is totally a isu fica slabus okay because the last one you mentioned in the in, in one of the slide the last slide you said you know further integration of fica in sap modules right so i'm talking about both yeah. covered in that no actually it is a utility so we are not going to cover module 14 since it is a FICA and uh, it is a specific utility is a specific, so there is no such integrations with other modules. So there is no SD FICA integration, you mean to say? Um, yes. When you are not going to cover it, it's there or it's not there? Uh, uh, integration with other modules. I'm talking about specific to sales and distribution module. Of SAP, like you know, how does that gets integrated with FICA? Um, as of no, I have to check, but okay, we are good with 13 modules. I have to check this 14 point, okay, okay, yeah. And and you said you have utility experience, right? So, is it yeah. uh, which markets you are working in? Like, you know, is it a European uh, market or Indian market is, or US market? it is us market north america client okay yeah and then you you're not going to cover uh, the budget billing part of it uh, i will cover okay because i haven't seen that you know 
I yeah, it is not in the plan like yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is not in the uh, presentations, but I will add budget billing as well. And when you say the bill print workbench, like you know, what is it you're covering there? That uh, print print bill work work workbench. So basically, it includes uh, whenever a PDF has been triggered, like in a particular collection step, a PDF has been triggered. So how it is being printed and how it is. Uh, sent to a customer like that thing how where the entry has been created so these are the things because yeah right. yeah because pwb is uh altogether a different module yeah i know yeah pw is a different model but again it's mentioned here i am wondering yeah. like no what is being covered out there Hmm. Okay, so, so so when you coming to the practical aspect of it, like you know, when you when you start trading, so do you think hmm. you're going to uh, put into the system in, from a project perspective? You're going to talk about or like you know, you take a project and then say this is the client and this, I mean, not the client. Forget about the client for a minute. Like you know, this is the scenario. You know, this is a requirement that we have. I know for this customer, and then this is how we are going to address out there. Okay, so that is a path you take at the time of training. Or you're going to talk about it later, like you know, how do you go about you know doing the training part? Uh, actually, if we talk about the cust, if we talk about the client request, like what kind uh, real time scenarios, basically, what are their requirements? So to cover those requirements, uh, we need some ABAP uh, code as well, right? To properly integrate it, because FIGA configuration is. Um, not only a solutions to any specific requirement we have to integrate it with coding as well a web code as well yeah so i will uh, show i will present some real time scenarios uh, but like uh, the strategy i will follow i will show you how these transactions will work what are the basic configurations behind it how to configure it so these are the steps which will I go, which I'm going to show you, like how a proper transactions will work, what is the table level activities, and what is the configurations behind those activities. Okay. So so you start with the requirement, then move on to the configuration, and then do some transactional data. Is what you're going to do? In the uh, or is it already pre-configured that we are going to walk through? And then explain the relevance of each of those items on the system. Uh, in the system, it is uh, it is not configured from the scratch. So, as a part of training, uh, we are going to configure some of the uh, transactions, and we will show like how it is work on the system. Okay, and then basically for FICA, the input is going to come from. The billing part of it right so okay my understanding is that you're going to start off from you know the meter to cash process and then come on to the the invoicing piece and then uh talk about uh, how this configuration is going to work how does it really no i'm, I'm trying to understand uh, you know like you know yeah uh, like you know on a real time like you know the moment i'm done with this training i can mm. i go as a fica consultant in the market okay can i have my resume built in out there you know as a FICA consultant with some of the projects and then you know uh, talk about some uh, real-time scenarios that we have seen okay because you know that you said you are a real-time you know you're working real-time in utility space right the FICA module yeah so yeah that that's what you know the end, end goal is that like you know me being you know going into the market as a FICA consultant okay yeah uh, so yeah you will be as a FICA consultant after this course and yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, 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 I think sorry. I think I'm taking a lot of time. So so go ahead with your um, you know, presentation like okay. can, you know. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we can start with the basic uh, master data of the FICA. Okay. Uh, let me open. I think it looks like uh, Rashik has a question. Uh, 
um could you please come again looks like raj shekhar has some question i think i see the hands on there okay yeah one of the parts go ahead yes uh, do you have any doubts raj shekhar uh if you are speaking you are not audible raj shekhar I guess your mic settings are not proper. Uh, Rashikar, could you please rejoin once? We can't hear you. Yeah, we know you can go ahead. Meanwhile, I'll just check with him. Okay. Yeah, we know you can uh, hear me. Yes, yes. Now yes, I can sir. hear you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, in la at last i will uh, have some questions so i will ask okay yeah so if we talk about the basics of fica uh, basically it is used for the processing of mass numbers of transaction on a single day like it is the main application of the fica is utilities and telecom sectors where it is widely used so uh, basically it is a sub ledger accounting system where a uh millions of documents has been posted on a single day and those documents has been reconciled and sent to the general ledger that is uh that is in sap fico environment so uh, just to handle those millions of customer and the mass transactions of data and the mass document postings mass uh letter generation invoice generations the fica is introduced so the basic uh, master data in fica that is first one is business master data and second one is technical master data in technical master data uh in business master data we have three uh, sub divisions like first we have a business partner uh business partner second we have a contract account so whatever the transactions which we have which we are going to use uh in the fica so in approx all of the transactions these are the inputs like bp contract account and contracts these are the inputs so we will understand how like what is the definition of those how to check those in the system like the details basic details of these business master data as well as we on the other uh, on the other hand <clears throat> we have a technical master data technical master data that is uh, informations related to the devices where the device has been where the meter has been installed where what is the premise what is the connection objects and uh, what is the uh, installations so first we have a connection object <clears throat> second we have a premise where the meter has been installed third we have the installation <clears throat> um then we have a move in and move out process how to move in and how to move out a customer so basically these things are covered uh, as a device management part so we will discuss these things but first we have to focus on the business master data what is bpca contract account ca means contract account bp is business partner so let's take an example to start uh, these business master data first we will discuss business master data so what is a business partner so <clears throat> a business partner name itself signifies that what is a business partner a person a, <clears throat> a person who is a partner or a <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> yeah so a uh, business partner it can be a person or an organization 
uh, who is taking a service from the utilities company okay for example me me taking a uh, vinod is taking a service from a utilities company <clears throat> yeah so if i am taking a service directly from the utilities company then i am a business partner a business partner can be any organizations for example it can be any factory uh, any factory uh, which is taking a services from a utility factory it can be organization it can be a person okay so uh, another term we have a contract account so it is a important term in a fica contract account is the master data which we are going to use in every segment of fica so contract account for example i am taking a service from a utilities company uh, for example in india uh, i live in delhi okay and uh, i have taken a service from a utilities company uh, let's take an example in whole india uh in whole india we have only one service provider one utilities company that is for example a geo power okay for example a geo geo power is the only utility company which we have in india uh, <clears throat> so i am living in delhi i taken a service from a geo power and for example uh, one of my brother which who is living in mumbai is also taking a service from a utility company called geo power so in that scenario we will have to create a two contract account first contract account is on my name and second contract account is on my brother's name okay so and we have a one bp a uh, one bp that is me we have a ca contract account that is first contract account is me and second contract account is two uh two okay so uh my brother took a service from a geo power okay so uh, what he did he just created a separate contract account inside one bp that is my so we have a relations here so how bp is related to this ca so we can say this is a brother so we have a configurations we have a, a fields to check the relations as well uh, in the t codes okay so why we require two contract account here i am a business partner i am taking a service from a geo power in delhi my brother is opted for a same uh, utilities services uh, that is geo power and he is residing on uh, he is residing at mumbai so we have created a two contract account under a single business partner why we required so basically uh, just to do a separate invoicing process and uh, uh, basically uh, creation of two contract account leads uh, to the two accounts two individual accounts where a separate invoice has been posted where a separate a uh, billing where a separate payment has been a payment cycle has been posted or a run on an account okay so uh, a business partner a business partner can have a multiple contract accounts can have a multiple contract accounts there is no limit okay it goes to up to n numbers n numbers of a contract account under a single business partner but uh but <clears throat> yeah so but a single contract account cannot have two business partners okay so this is the link between those two master datas a business partner can have a multiple contract accounts for example i am a business partner i have a contract account uh, for example i am living in delhi my brother once live in mumbai third one is living at pune and fourth one is living at j and k so instead of creation of a 
another business partners what they have decided they have decided to take a services under a single business partner just by creating a multiple contract accounts okay and multiple contract accounts uh, leads to a separate invoicing cycle as i told earlier leads to a, a different payment cycles whatever the activities has been happened on an any contract account it remains to that contract account only it will not impact uh, it will not create any other impact on the uh, another contract account under a single bp so this is the relationship between a business partner and a contract account okay and uh, we have another term that is a contract so for example geo power is the uh, utilities company which deals with the electricity and gas services for example okay <clears throat> so whatever the contracts i have signed with geo power like for example contract account one is opting electricity <clears throat> from geo power uh, contract account two is opting only gas from geo power so these are the contracts so uh, contract account three is taking electricity as well as taking gas from the geo power so i will say uh, this contract account one is taking only electricity electricity means having only one contract that is of electricity okay <clears throat> so contract account 2 is having only one contract that is of gas so these are the contracts uh, which we have uh, of a particular contract account so there is a linkage like this this is the contract uh, see a single contract cannot have cannot have a multiple contract accounts it is directly related to a single contract account these contracts have their individual uh, these contract accounts have their individual contracts okay those are not links with others see one contract is relates to only one contract account but a single contract account can have a multiple contracts okay this single contract account can have a multiple contracts like for example this contract account one can have a electricity and gas as a contract okay but electricity and gas have only one contract account and this ca can have only one business partner but a business partner can have a multiple contract accounts okay so this is the master data thing business master data thing of fica so does anyone have any doubts in the relationship of a business partner contract account and contract how those are linked with each other good uh, yeah thanks yeah thanks so this is how it is linked uh, we have the multiple t codes we have a multiple tables for business partner to track uh, activities against contract accounts we have the tables for a contract as well okay so for a business partner i have uh, represented it on a short form that is bp so bp is the t code t code for business partner is bp we have a multiple t codes for a single business partner that is uh, we have one t code business partner if you try bp let me show you i have given bp as a t code see it is the maintain business partner here you can create change or display any business partner using this bp as an alternative to this uh, business partner t code bp we have three t codes as well that is fpp1 2 and 3 so fpp1 is for creation of business partner which we can do it from bp t code as well 
fpp2 is for change fpp3 is for display of any business partner okay so let me show you what are the some fields inside a business partner and what those represents yeah uh, you know uh, apart from this yeah. uh, why can't we discuss with the technical side of the uh, coin uh, uh, exactly how the data is coming from uh, basically from where the data is coming into fika okay so basically for this sap it is a database okay so we have a front end of it as well okay so uh, we have their front end website where the customer logs in uh, for every utilities company they have created their uh, front end website either in dotnet or any other uh, front end language where the whenever a user if it is a first time user it always signs up okay it always signs up at the time of sign up uh, they have to fill some fields like uh, what is the name phone number address payment details if they want to add some business uh, if they want to add some bank details and any credit card like what is the nationality so that is the entry that is the uh, informations which the customer fills up uh, at the front end so uh, we have another module that is pipo which is responsible for reconcile those informations and uh, process those data into sap uh, backend tables so this is how the data flows looks like so there is no any uh, agents or any uh, user which will open up the uh, sap and creates a business partner individually for an each each con for each individual so in a productions we never use those bpt codes fpp1 fpp2 fpp3 we just have to uh, in productions those data will get flow from the front end we just uh, uh, keep those knowledge like how to create uh, if we want to create any test data if we want to uh, if we want to uh, meet any preconditions so that's why we just need those information like how to create those business partner okay. otherwise in productions we yeah, don't got, need to uh, create got, it yeah, yeah got it yeah. You know. so what is the relationship between sd and our uh, brim module so how uh, at what level these uh, sub modules are integrating with pika is there necessary uh, to integrate with that or there is no point of like uh, as you mentioning that directly they can uh, through browser uh, front-end application they can they are keying the data so that is the only way to get the data uh, to get the data there is no integration with SD module mm -hmm. but FICA all together deals with the payments of any customers or deals with the uh, returns refund so nowadays FICA is widely used because of the payment speciality payment functionality large number of, large number of payments customer large number of customers who deals with the payments I see uh, uh, we can integrate fica nowadays with any modules because of the payment functionality so this is how it is integrated but not much very integrated with sg okay how about uh, vr brim so FICA, so uh, you are saying how FICA is related to BRIM? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you know like in BRIM module, we have a four sub modules that is SOM, CC, CI and FICA. Okay, so uh, basically BRIM uh, is a subscription module like where, where a customer is subscribing any thing nowadays like in netflix hotstar or any of the ott platform in any of the uh, platforms if it is subscribes uh, whatever the consumptions uh, that subscription is uh, totally handled in som module but in the cc and ci like for example take an example of a wi-fi services like what is the consumption uh, we have in a wi-fi nowadays there is a particular fixed plans okay but in if you talk about uh, 
five or ten years ago uh, like uh, if you call and call someone and uh, it your charge is totally based on the minutes how many minutes you have uh, did a conversation on a call that is uh, directly proportional to your charge minutes is directly proportional to a charge okay so whatever the charging we have from there that is a charge that is a consumption and uh, that consumption was built to a customer account and that if the customer pays those consumption pays those uh, billing consumption pays those invoices then fica is in a role here again okay if it is pays then fica is in the integration where the payment has been uh, successful or failed uh, where the payment has been in in a role that means you can say a FICA is in a role. So in BRIM, that is usage to cash. Basically, whatever the amount of uh, thing you are using, like uh, internet or any other uh, meter read something. So whatever based on the consumption, a bill has been charged and you have an invoice has been generated and you have to pay the invoice. So a FICA is in a role. So this is how it is linked. okay so the billing uh, the device management completely you will explain or just you only the theory part uh, no 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 device management i will not explain or even there is no theory part yeah okay yeah so nowadays what is happening in the market we have a smart meters okay where uh basically you can say a uh, prepaid meters where you have to recharge first and then based uh, on that recharge you will get some units you have to consume it yeah and in some of the markets we have uh, old fashions meters like whatever the consumption we have to build on based of that consumption then invoice has been generated then you have to pay yeah okay so I, what is the use of fica alone no, if i learn like what is the use of okay so yeah use of fica basically fica is the uh, module we are where you are going to learn how the payments has worked like how the auto pay if you have uh, see uh, some of the apps nowadays giving a functionality of auto pay right like whenever an invoice has been posted on your account that uh, uh, payments from your account has been debited and uh, <clears throat> your invoice has been paid okay so uh, i will tell you example of utilities how the fica is integrated see once the invoice has been generated uh, let's take in an example a year your utility invoice has been generated okay now you have to pay it for example you are not paying it on a time okay most of the customers are not paying on a time because uh, it might be any reason the customer is not paying the first step is the lpc has been posted if it is not further paying that invoice uh, late payment charge has been posted then your account go on a dunning cycle where the separate where a individual uh, steps has been taken on your account like you will get a call from the agent you will get some letters that please pay this uh, this much of uh, invoice which has been generated okay if you are still not paying they will disconnect your uh, services whatever the services you are taking from that utility company they will disconnect it if the if you are not if you are not paying that invoice uh, after even even after disconnect then they will send your account to a collection agency which is a third party third external collection agencies where a person will come will reach out at your home and he will say like please pay this much of amount okay if you are still not paying then a further strict action has been taken on your account like they in some of the scenarios in some of the utilities company there is a court case as well okay they are going to uh, file a case on their local judiciary okay and if you're still not paying there uh, they eventually have to write off the uh, invoice which has been posted so this is uh, what fica is okay. yeah thank you which yeah, you. yeah which starts just after the invoice posting on your account yeah <clears throat> 
in billing portion uh, see in isu we have a three major modules that is billing uh, device management billing and fica once the meter is installed after, upon installing of that meter an invoice has been generated okay once the invoice has been generated uh, till invoicing process that is covered under isu billing portion okay once the invoice has been posted then a fica will come in a role so nowadays companies are implementing fica because of the payments functionality because of auto pay and because of subscription based module as well okay and uh, because of the special feature of dunning okay <clears throat> we have to send different reminders on a customer account if it is not paying yeah any any other doubts yeah i'm good vinod yeah please go ahead okay okay so uh, let me show you we are at business partner and i am going to show you like how a business partner looks like what is the structures which we have okay so these details which we got it from the front end okay which is uh, uh, converted into sap database table this is not a manual activity we have a separate jobs uh, configured in a system we are not the ones who is going to configure the jobs we have a different other modules which is responsible for uh, populating these data into sap tables okay so for example in the address tab we have the address of a customer where the customer lives total address we have the phone numbers email fax and address validity like this address is valid so uh, whenever in the system if you are see seeing this date 1231999 that is means infinity that is mean it is a active okay so i can see this address is a active okay from this date to this date there is no particular date defined that means it is a active address okay so if you can see uh, here we have the name address uh communications like mobile number telephone email fax how we can reach out to that customer this is particularly a business partner level data okay and this is the address overview basically if you double click on this address overview you will get the same details whatever we have in the first tab this is the identifications identifications means uh uh for example in india we have a aadhar card so in us or in any other other market they have their social security number whatever okay so in if it is a indian client then you will get to you know, they have added their pan card or if they have added their aadhar card details so these details will get uh, uh, shown up here here in the external business in this id type so in currently we have id types like uh, this is a project specific totally if it is an indian client then you will get to see a aadhar card or something like that so whatever the identification the customer has given at the time of enrollment so those details will get shown up here okay <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah so this is a control tab where uh, you can control the uh, like what is the business partner type and what is the print format whenever i invoice or whenever a pdf has been able whenever pdm has been generated on your account there is nothing much to discuss on this tab the important tab is payment transaction where we have a bank details as well uh, as well as a payment card details so at the time of enrollment customer has given a bank details okay so these are the verified bank details which we have in our sap system so this is the bank details of the customer uh, and this is the if the customer has uh, given the credit card details as well then those credit card details will be shown up here as well so i assume that the customer has not given any credit card details at the time of enrollment that's why we don't have any entry here he has given a bank details okay so these bank details can be used for the 
auto pay for the uh, payment runs where the automatic payment has been deducted from the account so these bank details are used for that activity <clears throat> uh, we don't have much to discuss in other tabs we are these generally are not in use <clears throat> we have these buttons for creation of any business partner if you want to create you can give any uh, details and you are good to create any business partner in the system okay <clears throat> uh, we have a multiple tables if you talk about the tables of a business partner then you can see uh, let me wrote it down in the excel for business partner tables we have a BUT triple zero. We have a multiple in BUT triple zero. We have the basic details of a business partner like address. What is the name? What is the communications? Okay. Uh, we have BUT zero ID where the identification details where the uh, whatever the um, identification number a customer has given at the time of enrollment. Those details are available in BUT zero ID table okay <clears throat> but zero cc so but zero cc is the table where the credit card details of a business partner has been stored okay and but zero bk so but zero bk is the table responsible for the uh, uh, responsible for storing the biz, uh, bank details of a customer of a business partner where the bank details of a business partner has been stored a table is directly linked with one table that is bnka banka this banka is not a business partner related table uh, this is a bank details related tables where you can see the bank details like whatever the customer has added if for example if you have the customer have added a hdfc bank so the details of hdfc banks will be stored in bnk bnka that is not a business partner table just for your information i have told this bnk is the table and uh, <clears throat> we have other tables like beauty 020 where the address id where the proper whole address has been stored uh, and one table that is directly linked with this beauty 0 Two zero that is ADRC. ADRC is the table which is which also stores the address, uh, basically a full address in detail address of a business partner. In Beauty Triple Zero, we have the address, but not in a <coughs> not in a full. Uh, don't have all fields in Beauty Zero, but we always prefer ADRC for the logics which we given in a system. Okay, so for example, if a client requirement is that you have to create a report where the business where you have to show a business partner uh, details like uh, what is the credit card number what is the bank account in a single report what is the social security number what is the identification what is the uh, proper address so we always use these tables for these kinds of uh, requirement okay we always pass business partner in this table and we will get the relevant details from these tables okay we have the multiple tables uh, but those not are in much use f4 <clears throat> see we have this much amount of tables for the business partner only so we don't require these tables the tables which i have mentioned those are in a use generally okay beauty 020 bp address beauty 0 bk for bank details beauty 0 cc for payments beauty 0 id for id number Mm, let me check. Okay. 
yeah <clears throat> so does anyone have any doubts in business partner like what is the business partner uh, what are the corresponding tables and what is that decode so does any of does anyone have any doubts in business partner I'm good winner. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so similarly we have the tables for contract account we have the T codes for contract account creation change and display and uh, Mm, basically most of the actions are taken at the contract account level BP is just for the header level informations like uh, uh, if we want to gather some informations uh, related to any business partner but whatever the actions uh, invoice has been posted dunning has been applied on account and whatever the majority of actions uh, that always taken up on the contract account levels okay so we never use business partner for such kind of uh, actions we always use contract account because it is a proper contract of a customer where it is uh, taking a service if we are taking any action on a business partner level then it is uh, it will impact all of the contract account inside that business partner okay so that's why we always specify a contract account uh, in any of the activities which we are going to cover okay so <clears throat> for a contract account uh, um, <clears throat> yeah contract account we have some tables we have some t codes uh, t codes is caa 1 2 and 3 ca1 2 and 3 these are the t codes uh, through which we can create ca1 is for create ca2 is for change in contract account ca3 is for uh, display in contract account so these are the t codes these are the only t codes which we use for a contract account okay and we have a tables uh, for a contract account we have a table that is fkk vkp and fkk vk so these are the two tables uh, which generally is shows the details of a contract account fkk vkp is the important which we use in every uh, logics in any requirement fkk vk is just a header level where we don't have much information okay uh, in fkk vk we just have a contract account name and contract account type because of that type field we use fkk vk otherwise fkk vkp is covering all of the parameters which we have uh, i will cover this uh, contract account in next session so today we will wrap up our call so does anyone have any doubts in this session i'm good Vinod. thank you thanks for so So we know. I just want to understand, like you know, um, yeah, couple of things. You know, primarily, you know, as I was talking to you earlier. So mm. one is, uh, yeah, you said you're going to talk about the real-time scenarios out there, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you're going to show that in the system end to end. Mm. Okay, yeah. that is one piece. Okay, the second one is, for me, my understanding is like you know. So you have device management followed by billing mm. module and followed by the FICO part. Basically, yeah. after the FICO thing, ultimately yeah. it's going to get merged with the FICO part of it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. when you start training on this, you know, when when you talk about, I understand you know, you're talking about the table level and talking about transaction level. You are explaining this piece. Okay, fine, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but when you really start working on an account for a customer, like you know, where do you start off? In the system and then how does the flow happen out there so that's something that we would i would like to see basically uh, in the system 
because I, I think I can I, I think I got a chance to get get into the system and then practice myself right so so yeah the goal for me especially you know for me is you know once I'm done with this training course you know I should be able to really go out in the market have my resume built in out there as a FICA consultant mm -hmm. and what all that that are required is what I'm looking at right now so more of a real-time scenarios explanation part because whatever you know uh, the basics that we are looking at right now is one piece of it okay second okay. piece is more more of you know the real-time examples real-time project scenarios that you know tomorrow when you face an interview on this you should be able to really mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, answer those uh, questions from you know whatever the interview we're facing with basically so, so I'm, I'm primarily looking at from that point of view like you know uh, so I, I don't know how far you're going to help or you know this training program is going to cover on that aspect um okay so real-time scenarios you mean uh real-time client requests like like what kind of request uh we have got from the clients like if you want to create any program or something like that are you trying to say right. like that no no not a program basically so say for say for example the dunning you know or you're talking about the clearing category okay or yeah. anything like you no know, so uh you know in a real time how, how how it happens out there you know for a line item that you post on the invoice basically so okay when you get the, the incoming payment you know how do you process the payment and then how that configuration piece on that okay this could be a simple example what i can give it to you okay, okay. which would happen in a utility company like saying that okay fine I have a new charge is being posted. You know, we are billing the customer yeah. for yeah. you know for the delivery charge, for example. Okay, okay so then, yeah, so you are basically talking about the configuration part, right? Purely, that's what it is as a functional consultant for five cars. Yeah, is what you're going to do, right? Okay, as a functional yes. consultant, when you go in the market, okay, and we are not talking about the customization part. You know, that is nowhere involved. You know, I'm not really looking at it right now. Okay, even though you are talking about the FQ events, you know. That really yeah. gets in there. Okay, so, 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 yeah. I mean, my focus is that, like, you know, I'm primarily looking at that part of it. So once I'm done with the training, okay, real time scenarios, and you know, I can put mm -hmm. it on my resume and then go ahead and then say, like, you know, uh, then, you know, face an interview is what I'm looking at. Hmm. Okay. So as a part of this training, uh, we are going to cover the configurations part as well like mm -hmm. uh, if i talks about the payment runs so how to configure those payment run in a system like what are the payment methods we are going to cover those in the system yes if we are talking about see since dunning nowadays it is uh, handling through collection strategy that is handled in brf plus so brf is altogether a different module where right. it is not not uh, related to a FICA. We have the multiple applications of BRF. So BRF plus right. consultants are different. Yeah. So that is I'm not gonna cover. Uh, but uh, major configurations I will cover. But in if you talk about Dunning, then we have a different Dunning activities like on this particular collection step. What are the activities? So for those kind of activities, we have a ABAP program to be developed. Like for example in a collection strategy in collection step one a letter has been triggered to your account okay so to trigger those letter we have a proper a bap code like uh, we have a proper uh, methods to be developed in the system so these things are not going to be covered because those uh, really needs a uh, abap consultant to be here like which create a programs although it will takes a time like to create a program but I will tell you, I will let you know like where you have to configure the step, where you have to configure the program so that in a particular step it will, it being called called. Okay. So these are the things. Okay. So you, you, you think like, you no, know, you know, apart from the basics that we are talking here, the technical yeah. master data, the business master data, right? You know, you think you're going to start off your you know, process in the system starting from creation of a BP, the contract account, the contract, the move in, okay, and then um, you bill a customer yes. and then, okay, and the billing document is created followed by the, you know, the invoice part, 
wherein the fighter comes yeah. in. Yeah. Not the yeah. Like, no if, yeah. Hmm. Just to let you know, I have to check the billing configuration in the system because I am also not familiar of the billing configurations. So yeah, if that's billing configuration, basically, yeah. So the thing yeah. is, like, you know, the flow happens. You know, uh, prior module we are talking about is building here. Prior to that is device. Ultimately, we are talking about a move-in, the customer mm -hmm. service part. You know, module part of it, like, you know, where the flow happens. Yeah. On this. So, so, so for the practice yeah. part. Okay, when you say I, I have the FICA, I'm a FICA mm -hmm. consultant, like, you know, right? So the start, mm -hmm. the, 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 the starting point would be customer moving in. And then, you know, we do the, you know, I mean, of course, prior to that, we have the device installed and all that stuff, right? So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm more looking at, you know, the end-to-end -end part you know, so that, you know, we, we would be going out in the market, you know, give the functional, FICA functional mm -hmm. consultant, you know. I do understand there are some, Customization required, you know, like the bill print, the, in the invoice part. Some of them, you know, yeah. you need to have the technical resource available, you know, to do that. But you know, while practicing in the system here, whatever that is being provided, do you think the system has got the capability to really look at end to end and then see? Can you just quickly get onto the another table I can talk about? Yeah. Yeah. ERD. Yeah. ERD. ERD. Billing table. Uh, look at the entries. No. Yeah. So I guess billing configurations yeah. are not there. Yeah. Yeah. ERCH. Yeah, CH. Yeah. We don't have you know the billing documents or the invoicing documents created in this system. So for the practice yeah. part, you know, I think you know we'll be able to practice on this system you know that's where the challenge is okay and this in fi we know like you know we have a major component okay mm -hmm. uh, in sap uh, when you talk about fica i think you can't you can't uh, miss on talking about sd part of it there is something called sd fica integration where you know uh, okay. uh, uh, sd sales document you know in, that is created out there when the invoicing that is done in sales module would get latched on at the time of invoicing so there is a very good uh, good integration that you see out there in the you know in the market for utility companies where okay at the time of invoicing okay. a utility customer you can as well get something from the sales and distribution module at the time of invoicing so that gets integrated out there the invoicing level okay okay typically like you know you are talking about collecting you know uh, some rentals you know for water heater or whatever it is right so so mm -hmm. instead of configuring everything in the billing part okay we can actually <laughs> have you know a contract created in sd and then that flows into the fica at the time of invoice okay okay yeah yeah, so primarily I'm, I'm looking at the FICA piece, you know, I, I, you know, I'll mm. help you. Yeah. Help. Otherwise, I'm good. Thanks a lot, Vinod. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks. Yeah.